Hey there. Today we're going to have a look at a pen from a brand that was new to me, which is always very exciting. I always like to uh, fiddle around with, with pens from brands that I'm not familiar with because I've seen my share of Mont Blancs and Lamy's and all that stuff. So today we're going to look at this pen. It is made by Kilk, which is a Turkish company and they made this pen, the Orient. Uh, they reached out to me, they said, would you like to review one of our pens? And I said, pizzazz! Obviously I want to review one of your pens. And so they said, we'll send you this. I said, okay. They said, what nib? I said, brought. They said, okay. Put it in the mail. Boom. And here it is. So, I particularly enjoy this. I, I like that it's orange too, obviously the uh, my national color, so that's an extra fun detail because I'm known to be a magnificent patriot. Um, so let's have a look at the pen. I will cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample and tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I still sometimes get the order wrong, but that's the order. Let's have a look at this pen. And first of all, of course, a very kind thank you to Kilk for sending me the pen. Let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at the Silk um, Orient Fountain Pen. Orient Fountain Pen is what the box says, and here it says Latin, and I haven't looked up what this means, but Digging back into some Latin education, I'm going to go with Out of the East Comes the Light. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it certainly fits with the sort of sun, sun theme on this. Uh, sampler, which is nice, orange. Um, Kilk, handmade in Istanbul, Turkey, with an address and all that. Also came, by the way, with two packets of Turkish coffee, which is very sweet. Take off the sleeve. Now we have this, one of these sort of magnetic clip boxes, and the box is full of all sorts of goodies. So let's take this out, see what's in there. That was the pen condom, which is now taken out. There is a uh, jeweler's cloth, uh, which is nice because the pen actually has silver trims and silver will tarnish over time. So that's a very nice detail, and I like it a lot. Here we have a little card. Uh, which is a warranty. The pen comes with two-year warranty, which is very nice in a day and age where many fountain pens now have a year or less. Uh, so I've even seen a couple of brands that now just offer months, like half a year of warranty. So I think two years is, is very quite nice. Um, good instructions, how to clean it, etc. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So then we have the actual pen. I will zoom in a bit. I will show you the pen right next to a Pilot Metropolitan. As you can see, it's a somewhat beefy pen, not super long, but certainly girthy. And uh, let's go with that. The pens cost $260. They have nib options that range from extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and double broad in Bach number no. six steel. Uh, these curves are meant to represent the natural curves of Eastern design philosophy. The trims you see are 925 silver, sterling silver, which is quite nice. It's very hard to show you this. Oh, I think, no, 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 wait. I think the camera is grabbing it. I can just see it. There is a 925 engraving at the back of the cap uh, to show you that it is uh, silver. As I said, two year warranty, and that's pretty much it. So let's, let's cover the parts of the pen. On top of the pen here, this finial, same material as the rest of the uh, cap, which I think is very nice, completely flat. And nicely polished. Then we have this clip, <clears throat> a band with a clip on it which looks to be a solid piece which I always like, uh, that way there's less snappage. Uh, the clip is definitely tight but has a nice little sort of ski slope design there which makes it easier to clip in or onto something. Then we have this center band, I'm just taking a sip of tea here, Then we have this center band, which I think has a very nice pattern, and I do really like that. The center band is on the barrel, not the cap. I'll come back to that in likes and dislikes. And then we have this strongly tapered uh, barrel and completely flat end, the end there, and the pen does stand up. It is that flatly ground, which I think is quite nice. Um, this is a slightly curved surface, by the way, but there again, it stands up. That was completely useless, but I thought that would be a fun demonstration. I thought this 
rightly or wrongly, possibly both. Now, moving on, we uncap the pen, we have the section. I think this is one of my favorite parts of this pen because I love the way they've shaped this section. It tapers down very naturally and flares out, and I love the look of this. Your mileage may vary, but I really like this. Threads are nice, they're not at all sharp. They're really nicely made, you barely feel them. Um, that was the business card falling off, if you heard anything. Nice size, not huge, not too small. We have a nice number six steel Bock nib with the Kilk logo laser engraved as well as B for broad and a plastic feed, could be their uh, ABS. Um, when I saw this, I immediately thought this is a pen that probably posts because it tapers so well. And I first thought, oh no, it, it, it actually doesn't. But it does. You just need to make sure that the end of the barrel and the cap align perfectly. And when they do, you actually have a very solid posting and a very nicely sized pen. So I was quite impressed by that. Um, one thing I wanted to say, I'll come back to that, is that there is quite a step down from the cap to the barrel as you can see but of course once the pen's uncapped you no longer notice that the pen is fed through cartridges which are available separately from Kilk but it's just standard international so you can use your favorite brand and then we have this supplied Kilk converter which actually does have Kilk engraving I always like it when companies do this because it adds just a little bit more branding to the pen and it just goes one step a step above just slipping in a regular Schmidt converter, which I just think is a nice touch. It doesn't add any functionality, I just think it's a nice eye for detail. We need to see how this pen writes, so let's do that. I have inked up the pen with an ink that I thought was a good match. It's always a bit of a, a challenge for reviews, but I have found that this ink, uh, steel, broad, Lamy Mango does show up relatively well on camera. Some yellow inks barely show up. This is a nice yellowish orange with wonderful shading, by the way. Okay, writing with the pen is fun. It is a fairly smooth writer. Um, it has a little bit of feedback but it is the type of feedback that just lets you know that you're writing with a fountain pen. It's not scratchy, it's not unpleasant, just a tiny bit of feedback that I think personally is, is quite nice. I don't have to say personally because if I find it then obviously it is personal. Anyway, moving on, fast writing, Pen keeps up very well. I should say feed keeps up very well. I haven't had issues with startup issues or skipping, which is always nice. Broad nibs always make me a little bit nervous. More tipping means more material to polish and therefore more potential for over polishing, skipping behavior, hard starts. I have not had that in this pen, which is very nice. As to its wetness, of course, also a function of the ink and a little bit of the paper, but it's a pretty nice, well-tuned nib. Um, certainly round, it's not excessively broad. And I found, and I'm pushing this a little bit, but I found there is definitely a little bit of springiness to it. But as you can see, these tines are fairly pointy and a little thinner, so you can squeeze out some line variation. This is not advertised as a flex nib, so be very careful but it has the tiny bit of bounce to it. For those of you who enjoy such a thing, there was a little skip, but that was probably because I pushed it a bit. Um, reverse writing is scratchier. You can probably hear it, but you can get away with it. In a light ink, you don't see it so well, but I can still read this. Always a question of how does the camera pick it up? I can easily read this writing, not the handwriting, but I mean the writing itself. <laughs> Uh, um, and it still works. So if you really want that, you can go from, I would say, a, it is a broad, I would personally call this a, maybe a widish medium. I don't find this the broadest of broads, but that's perfectly fine. That's something on uh, Bock, not Kilk. And you definitely go to a finer nib. So it's certainly an option. I think it's very nice. 
very pleasant writer that I really enjoy using. So let's talk about likes and dislikes. What do I like and what do I not like about the Kilk Orient? I'll be fair, there's a lot I like. Uh, I, I think it's a nicely designed pen in a fairly original shape. It's not yet another cigar shaped pen. It's fairly nice. Completely flat ends. Uh, that's certainly an interesting design touch, but overall the curvature I think is very pleasant, very nice, very aesthetically pleasing. I like the silver details. That's nice. Uh, it, it adds a bit of panache uh, to the to the pen. I like the way it posts, although it, it, it confused me a little bit at first because I saw this and I thought this looks like something I would post and I initially thought it did not post but it really needs to, the cap needs to fit in exactly the right way but then it posts securely uh, and then you have a wonderful uh, size of pen in my mind so I really like that. These are all things that I think are great. Uh, cartridge converter filled, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, it's a simple tried and true system in my mind. And um, I know that someone's going to ask, the barrel is a solid piece, the metal ring is slid over that, so it's not the inside. So in principle, this could be eyedropper. However, bear in mind that the threads are metal, right? So you could get some sort of interaction with the ink and this metal. Um, in general, of course, acrylic metal, theoretically that could strip these threads, the metal could strip the acrylic threads over time. But it's not the cap, it's not something you use all the time, you only open and close this pen when you are inking it or cleaning it, right? So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Number six nib, that's nice, and I will say a very pleasant writer somewhat on the thin-ish end of things as far as I'm concerned, but that's that has nothing to do with the, the Kilk brand. It's a Bach nib. This is how they come out of the factory. So I like all of that. I'm just looking at my notes to see what I said. No, what I should say, what I'm about to... Anyway, you get the point. Um, things I don't like so much. There isn't a whole lot. What I will say is there's quite a substantial step down from cap to barrel and there is no band on that cap. That always makes me a little nervous because you do put stress on the cap as you tighten it. Some people over tighten their pens a little bit. Uh, you put stress on the cap without a center band to kind of, there's a better term from physics from this, but to disperse, I guess, that pressure. Um, center band can be very helpful on the cap and there is none. Am I concerned? Not really because it's pretty thick acrylic. But still, that, that something could happen to that. The step down doesn't really bother me. You see it, and it's one of those things I think that when, when you see it, you can't really unsee it. But on the other hand, once you uncap the pen, there's almost no step down. This is a very fluid uh, design that I think is, is very nice. So it's certainly not a huge deal. The final thing I will say is, I don't think it's a cheap pen. $260 for an acrylic pen with a steel nib, cartridge converter, um, I think is on the high end of things. On the other hand, you get for that a very attractive model, a fairly interesting design, a nice attractive finish, because I mean that, that orange is, is certainly um, eye capturing, is that, it, it captures the eye, um, and it writes really, really pleasantly. And as I've said a lot of times, at the end of the day, you purchase a fountain pen to write with. So if it is overpriced, but it doesn't write, you have a problem. If it's $5 and it doesn't write, you have a problem. It's maybe 260, but it is a very, very nice writer. So from that perspective, I have no issues. I hope this was useful. Again, a very kind thank you to Kilk for sending me the pen. Let me know what you think about the pen. And that's all there's to it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll gladly see you again soon. Bye.